Let's look at complex conjugate representations with more detail. So, recall, G is a finite group. Pi V is a finite dimensional representation of G over C. So, V is a finite dimensional vector space over the complex numbers. To define the complex conjugate representation of Pi V, we'll call that Pi bar V bar, we need three ingredients. First, the vector space, V bar, is just the vector space V. If the scalar multiplication on V, just denoted as Z times V, we want to be clear, we'll call it Z circle V. Then scalar multiplication on V bar by Z, is just given by multiplying, as usual, by Z bar. So if I want to be clear, we'll call this Z star V. Finally, for the group action on V bar, we leave things unchanged. So pi bar of G on V is equal to pi of G on V. So you note, the only change we're making in this representation is how we multiply by scalars. The advantage to this definition, which might seem awkward at first, is that the definition's base is free. So you'll note, we can work with this definition no matter how weird the V that we're starting off with is. So, what do we want to do here is just get a better feel for how changing scalar multiplication changes the original representation. Now, first thing we should check, that pi bar of G is a C linear map with our new scalar multiplication. So, the additive property should be clear. So all I gotta check is, is that multiplication by scalars factors through with our new scalar multiplication. So this is a straight shot. We know that pi bar is equal to pi. Then this is gonna be an element of V. So here we're just gonna multiply by Z bar. Since pi G is C linear, that means the Z bar pushes through. And so I can rewrite this as Z star V. And then we have our linear property. Now, let's look at a concrete example. So if I take Z mod three under addition, okay, V is just gonna be the complex numbers. We'll let omega be, okay, this third root of unity, e to the two pi i over three. And I can define a representation as pi sending zero to one, one to omega, two to omega squared. If we take the complex conjugate of pi, okay, what does that do? Well, pi bar of zero on V, okay, just goes to one V, which is going to go to one star V. For pi bar of one on V, that goes to omega V with the usual action. But to write it with the new scalar multiplication, I pull that out as omega squared. Then for pi bar two on V, so that's omega squared V, and then we can pull that out as omega star V. So we note with our new scalar multiplication, what happens, okay, pi is gonna to go to pi bar, and the effect here is just gonna take the conjugate of each of, okay, our numbers coming out. Here's another approach to the conjugate representation for pi V. First, I'll define a new representation, pi prime V. So we're gonna use the same vector space V. We'll have the usual scalar multiplication, but we're gonna change the group action. Now, if I choose a basis, V1 through Vn, then pi prime of G with respect to this basis, just gonna be the matrix given by pi of G with respect to this basis, but we take the complex conjugate of each entry. So, straightforward to see that this gives us a representation of G. Now, I wanna show that pi prime and pi bar are equivalent representations. So what we're gonna need is, we need a linear map T, which is an isomorphism from V to V bar, that also intertwines our group actions. Now, the T that I'll use, if we write our vector as a linear combination or basis, then it'll carry usual scalar multiplication to conjugate scalar multiplication. 
Let's write our group actions in terms of our basis. Okay, so these are straightforward. Okay, and here I have a sub j i, just gonna be the entries for pi of g in our basis. Now, let's see that t intertwines our group actions. So if we take t of pi prime of g on v i, well, we just follow our nose. Okay, so we're gonna use the entries for pi of g with the conjugate. We apply t, and that carries usual scalar multiplication to conjugate multiplication. If I apply t to vi and then apply pi bar of g, okay, well, vi goes to itself. Pi bar of g just acts by pi of g. So we'll just have a sub j i v j sum. And then since I'm working in v bar, we could pull this out as a bar j i star v j sum. So we see that these are equal. And so we have the intertwining property. Okay, also clear that t is an isomorphism. So we have an equivalence. As a final note, we showed the conjugate representation is equivalent to the dual representation. Now, this follows because when G is finite or compact, there will always exist an invariant Hermitian or product on our finite dimensional vector space. Now, for equivalence, we have to set up a linear map that is an isomorphism and that intertwines our group actions. So I'm gonna have I carries V bar into the dual of V. It's defined by carrying the vector V into the second slot of our Hermitian inner product. So for the linear property, okay, additivity, straightforward. We need to show that the scalar multiplication factors consistently through I. So if I take I on C star V, that's I of C bar V, we move it to the second coordinate, then the C bar comes out in front as C, and so we have the usual scalar multiplication on the dual of V. So that's linear. For the isomorphism property, we note both of these vector spaces have the same dimension. The only way I can get the zero linear functional to come out is if the zero vector is going in. So isomorphism. Finally, for the intertwining property, we're gonna apply i to pi bar of g on v. So we're just gonna move pi bar of g on v to the second slot. I can remove the bar because that's how we define our action. Then by the invariance property, the pi g, I can move to the first coordinate as a pi g inverse. And then that's how we act on elements that are in the dual of v. So it's just gonna be pi g of star on iv. So that's the intertwining property. So we see the conjugate representation of pi v is equivalent to the dual representation to pi v.